And CNBC is also rolling out the 2021 edition of the Disruptor 50. These are private companies on the cutting edge of technological change. Right now, we've got an interview with the head of the company that's coming in at number 38 on uh, this year's list, Ripple. The company uses blockchain to send money across borders for financial institutions, and it uses the token XRP to do it. Join us now, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple. Brad, great to see you, great to have you on today. Um, let's start just generally about, about the, uh, the, the crypto arena and, and what we've seen, because there's an article today, Brad, uh, about, uh, I guess it's harkening back to the colonial situation, uh, pipeline and ransomware, et cetera. And the thrust is that we just need to ban crypto. And, and, <laughs> it, and it's set forth, here's all the reasons. I think about everything that you've set up with, with blockchain and, and DeFi and, and, and how this uh, can really effectively replace a lot of existing systems like Swift or whatever, and it really works well. Do you think that, I mean, what do you make of, of someone that makes that case given all the blockchain infrastructure and everything else, not just around Bitcoin, but do you think that this toothpaste ever goes back in the tube like that because you can use it for ransomware? Not sure I've heard the toothpaste analogy before. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that one myself. Look, first of all, thank you for having me. I think the question you're asking is a really important one. And I think it gets to the kind of the core of sometimes just a misunderstanding about how these technologies can be applied in a way that actually is really good for businesses, for citizens, for, for just the community at large. And so when we talk about like, should we ban something? Let's make sure we understand what we're talking about. The way Ripple uses these technologies as you introduced is we can make cross-border payments, which are slow and expensive today. We can make them real-time, very efficient, very low cost, and that's good for the global economy. We can unlock trillions of dollars of kind of trapped capital to make the economy more efficient. And so blockchain technologies can be applied in a lot of really constructive ways that's reducing friction, whether that be transaction costs, transaction speed. But again, for Ripple, that's around payments. But, you know, I think to say, hey, let's just ban all this. Yes, the, the toothpaste might already be out. Uh, and I don't know how you get it back in. The other recent, uh, I guess, data point was China uh, with Bitcoin. And, and just overall, let's let's talk regulation because you uh, Ripple is unique in, in certain ways in that uh, you kind of control the amount of XRP that's out there and decide uh, when it can be issued and and actually the SEC took issue with that, so to speak, uh, in that it, you might be more like a security than a currency and that's still pending. So they just talk in general about all regulation and how it might affect yeah. you and Ripple even differently than it would affect Bitcoin. Well, I think what you're getting at at the core really is in the United States, there has been a lack of regulatory clarity. This is something I've been talking about even on CNBC for about two plus years. In other countries you have seen in the UK, Japan, Switzerland, Singapore. I mean, these are you know G20 markets where they have invested the time and energy either through legislation or rulemaking to provide that clarity and that certainty. And that allows investors to participate, that allows entrepreneurs to build, that allows people to build companies that make the CNBC disruptor list. So here in the United States, we haven't had that clarity. I think, uh, you know, just to correct something you said, Ripple actually doesn't control XRP. XRP is an open source technology, very analogous to Bitcoin. In contrast, XRP is very efficient in terms of speed of transaction. Very, It is a carbon neutral blockchain. So these are all examples of, of it being more efficient, but all of the XRP that has ever been created has already been created. So it's a zero inflation dynamic. But the core of what you're talking about around regulation, I think is what we're experiencing here in the US with the SEC. The SEC is making the assertion that these are investment contracts, that Ripple's sales of XRP to our customers is actually an investment contract. And you know, it, 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 a security is something where you, if, when you buy it, you own part of a company. You have a, a right to the, the profits. You can vote on the, the board of directors of that company. Uh, all of those things that are, you know, certainly CNBC covers in depth. That isn't true with XRP. You know, if you buy XRP, you you don't have uh, a, a ownership of Ripple. And I mean, ironically, you actually have XRP owners who have tried to right. sue the SEC for even bringing the case. Brad, what's the total number? It's it's, it's billions, obviously, and and you you do have a lot that hasn't been mined yet, and and can control when some of it is mined. Is, is that that's correct? Is it not? 
No, that's not right. The way XRP works is fundamentally different than the, the mining contract, the, the way you're describing it. So proof of work is the mining, that's how Bitcoin right. works, that's how Ether has it worked and it's kind of migrating to proof of stake. The XRP ledger uses something called consensus algorithm. And so all of the XRP ever created is 100 billion units. Ripple owns a lot. And so that's on kind of our treasury and we can control right. how we sell it to customers, but there's right. no more XRP that can be created. 